Jesus' name must be honor. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You listen to the message. Jesus' name must be honor. For Jesus' name to be honor. That is the question. How can Jesus' name be honor? Say, uh, John asked me to call you. You refuse to answer. That is not honor. I say, John, John, John. And John refused to hear you. Or you refuse to hear John. That is not honor. Say, John, John, John. No response. That is not honor. So that for Jesus' name to be honor is a million question. Kisley, Kisley, Kisley. No response. For Jesus' name to be honored. Mm. That is a question for every one of us. The question is Jesus' name be honored? They wash. We know you are there. And we can feel it. You are with us and we are with you over there. Yeah, you know this land is not a barrier. You know your Bible is there with you. Mm. Let's quickly look at the book of John 6, 63. They was going by the sun. We just sang now. Jesus' name must be honor. Must be honor. Must be honor. Jesus' name must be honor in my life every day. Is this be honor in your life? That is the question. So, but Sister Terry said, the spirit gives life, hmm, and the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoke to you, they are full of the spirit and life. Hmm. Hmm. And you know, Christ and the world are one. And here in verse 63, Say, the spirit gives life, and the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoke to you, they are full of the spirit and life. You also go down to the verse 65. He went on to say, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. You can't just wake up and say, I'm going to Jesus, I'm going to Jesus. You must be enabled. Me, you must be enabled, energized. You can't just say, oh, I'm a child of God, oh, I'm a child of God. Hmm? But why people say I'm a child of God today? Uh, there are many child of God, child of God, child of God. Yeah, people say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Oh, you don't need last time to do that. Hmm. Now, going by that John 6, or well, you listen to verse 65, he said, no one can come to me unless he is enabled. This means for Jesus' name to be honored, God's will must be spirit and life. We have language of today, and we have language of the Bible that saved, that creates, that rule over us. For Jesus' name to be honored, God's will must be spirit and life. It's not just to be born of the world, but you must be born of the spirit. Because the word refreshes our mind and the spirit renews our strength. This means two things must join, two things must merge, come together, the spirit and the word. Two things must join, must merge the spirit and the word. 
to be born again for the name of Jesus to be honored. It's not just a be he. It must be spirit and life. The power of God must go through the way and the spirit to bring about that. That is, I see God, you see power. So God must drive through the spirit and the word to bring about that. So to that, the word dominating you is the lordship of Christ in you. By meditation, the word can dominate. It dominates us through meditation, obeying, acting, reading. Meditation is a visit to him. This to say, the word has priority over his name. That is the word, has priority over his name. This is why today you call the name Jesus, a Jesus name. Even your dream, people come to attack you. And by the time you say, Jesus, but they say attack you and beat you and beat you. Or after that attack, you say Jesus. You want to say Jesus before that attack, but the enablement is not there. The energy is not there. The power, the grace is not there. But after they finish attacking you, Jesus, that is not after. Anyone can say, thank you, Jesus, after the miracle. But not everyone can say, Jesus, before the miracle. When you see a miracle about to happen, you will be looking at it. Is this will happen? How will this happen? Your interest is, you want to see how it will happen? Can this happen? You will be looking. But when miracle happen, Jesus! But before it happen, it take faith to say, Jesus. It take faith to say, Jesus, thank you, before miracle. But anyone can say, Jesus, thank you, thank you, after the miracle. Now, as you are sitting down, you have some pain, you have some challenges. It takes faith to say, thank you, Jesus, it's over. But it does not take reality to say, Jesus, thank you, when it's over. After, I'm here, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. But now the thing is still there for you to say, thank you, Jesus. It takes faith. Faith is expecting Jesus to do what he's promised to do. That is faith. But a man of faith will say, thank you, Jesus, for blessing me before blessing. But today we say, thank you, Jesus, after blessing. God's word has perished over his name. Yes, by the way, we are saved. It is the way, the word of God, that has taught us the value of the name Jesus. The authority of the name Jesus, our legal right to use the name Jesus. Anybody can use the name Jesus? How many has the right to use it? How many of you can say Jesus, and Jesus will come to the scene? So until you have the legal right, of using the name. You say, in my name, you shall cast out demon. And you now say, in Jesus' name, out demon. Without the word of God dominating your heart. It is when the word dominating your heart, it influences your character and your thoughts. It influences your character and your conduct. In my name, you shall cast out demon. You say, oh yes, Bible said it. The now walk toward the demon and say, In Jesus' name be delivered. And God's word has priority over his name. How would that happen? How will you bring Jesus to the scene? It is impossible. If you don't have God's word, you have nothing at all. If you don't have God's word, you cannot bring Jesus to the scene. If you don't have God's word, you have nothing at all. And if you don't have God's will, you cannot bring Jesus on the scene. Say, Jesus. And Jesus said, what are you saying? What do you want? 
So your son, Jesus must be honor, must be honor, must be honor. Jesus must be honor in my life every day. How can Jesus be honor when the word is not dominating your hearts? It is when God's word dominating your heart, it can influence your character and your thoughts and your conduct. You know, your character before now. Mm-hmm. I don't know what, whether this thing will happen. I don't know. Um, it's, can this be happen? But when God's word now dominating your heart, it, it change your perception, the way you raise it. Ah, this will happen. This will happen. It can happen. This will happen. It is God's word. It is God's word that builds faith in the believer. Christ can only come to your heart through faith. You know, your heart is his dwelling place. I mean, that is where he dwells. The planet where he controls you, the contact point. Your heart, that is why the Bible says faith is of man's heart. By living in the world and by well living in us, we have the legal right to use the name of Jesus. We have the legal right to the name Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Look at the book of Mark 16, 18. They say, they shall lay hands on the sea and they shall recover. This means nothing and nothing will ever happen without acting on the words. Nothing unless we act on the words. Because the word has priority over his name. So this is why you keep praying for people be here. Bible says they shall lay hand on the sea and they shall recover. Because the word gives value, gives authority and the legal rights. Now you call Jesus without the word, it's like you are calling your brother at home. Many of your brothers be at Jesus. Many people out there, they bear Jesus, their name is Jesus. They say their own name is Jesus, like you are calling somebody among you without the word. This is what you are facing. No one can say Jesus is the healer. No one can say Jesus is Lord. No one can say Jesus is a redeemer unless he is guided by the Holy Spirit. You must be guided. We want to be like Jesus. Holy Spirit is our guide. Tell your neighbor, I want to be like Jesus. Holy Spirit is my guide. He must be the one to guide you to be like him. He must guide you there. He must guide you to be like Jesus. It's not like you want to be like your father at home. You take your time to look at what your father is doing. Mm, my father has beer. Me too, I need to leave my beer. This is the way my father works. I need to work like that. That's imitation of man, imitation of God. I want to be like Jesus. Holy Spirit is my guide. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart, Lord, in my heart.
this is it, huh? In my heart. I want you to open your mouth to say, thank you, Jesus, for giving me faith to believe. Hmm. You hear what that verse 65 is saying? He said, no one can come to me unless he is guided. No one can come to me unless he is enabled. Say, thank you, Jesus, for giving me faith to believe. No, no, no. That's it. I want to be like Jesus. Holy Spirit is my guy. I can't just wake up and say, mm, I want to be like Jesus. This is the way Jesus walks. This is the way I will read my Bible. Let us see, hear what the Bible says about Jesus. I will just follow what the Bible says about Jesus. No. Follow Jesus solidly. Mm. I want to be like Jesus. Holy Spirit is my guide. Guide me. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me faith to believe. This is how I offer my prayer. She said, thank you, Jesus, for giving me faith to believe. Holy faith places him. They used to say that. I know this is the first time you, you t- ever think about that. That's uh, giving me faith to believe. Mm-hmm. You have said it. It is the way that has taught us the authority to say, leave, come, go. The way that God taught us. And that way must be spirit and life. He has promised he will never fail. I will follow him. I will follow him. He has promised he will never fail. His faithfulness. Listen to that. Listen to that. His faithfulness. That is why no matter what you are going through, in life, declare God's faithfulness. No matter what you are going to, no matter the situation you are in, declare God's faithfulness. Whether He hears you or not, it's God. It's Lord. It's Lord. Amen. Whether you are blessed or not, is Lord. Is Lord. Amen. That is it. That is it. Tell your neighbor, no matter what you are going through, no matter your situation, Declare God's faithfulness. Mm. Stand up to declare God's faithfulness. No matter what the challenge is, stand up, declare God's faithfulness. Because He has made way where there is no way for you. This is how to overcome all those things you are facing. You see what happened to Daniel in the lion den? Meshach, Shirak, Abednego in the furnace. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. What manner of man is Jesus? That is over to you. What manner of man is Jesus in my life? I know. In your life, you know differently. So no matter what you are going through, tell your neighbor, declare God's faithfulness. No matter what you are going through. I can hear you. 
I can hear you. Because I'm sensing God's deliverance. I'm sensing God's way out for you. No matter what you are going through, all you need, declare God's faithfulness. Rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. Will you open your lips and begin to declare God's faithfulness in your life? No matter what you are going through. In Jesus' name. That's all. That's all. Just declare God's faithfulness and see what comes next. If that your declaration comes from the heart, oh my God. Ask your neighbor, is your declaration come from the heart? I can hear you. You mean it? You mean it? Your declaration come from the heart? If your declaration come from the heart, 